3,000 years ago, the Assyrian Empire was given a sign of judgment at the same time Jonah preached to it. Is this sign going to repeat in the USA next month on April 8th when the total solar eclipse happens? Now, the prophet Jonah is famous for being swallowed by a great fish, but there's more to his story that may be duplicated with that April 8th eclipse. And if that's true, it makes this upcoming sign in the heavens very significant. Everyone concentrates on Jonah's miraculous survival in the belly of the fish, and that is important. Jesus quoted it, but it ignores something even more miraculous, that he went to the capital of the most violent and evil empire on earth and preached repentance to them. And they did it. They repented. Why? How did this happen? A prophet from another country comes to the most powerful king on earth at that time, and he and the city believe him? Why? Was Nineveh given a sign that judgment was coming? Maybe an eclipse, just like the ones coming up in the USA next month. Sign that scared them into repentance was a total eclipse behind the scenes of Nineveh's repentance at Jonah's preaching. And what will happen in the USA if we don't repent. This is Bible teacher Nelson Walters, and today we will look at that April 8th eclipse and why we think there's more to it than you have seen. But this could actually be a sign of judgment for the USA, including incredible links between this sign and Israel's peace plan, the incredible similarities to the sign given Assyria, and when Christians might expect judgment to hit the USA one that might be linked to a yet fourth USA eclipse coming this year that no one is talking about yet. Pretty earth-shaking ideas. And for this video, we need to shout out to Fisherman of our advisory team for his research on the modern signs and to fellow YouTuber Abraham Overcome Babylon for some of the awesome research on Assyria and the ancient signs. So let's start with the modern eclipses. The theory many have is that this series of eclipses are a warning to the USA and eventually to the world from God. Although Genesis 1.14 does tell us the sun and moon are given by God for signs and for seasons, what makes us believe that this particular set of four solar eclipses are any different from any others and are a warning from God? Well, because this set of eclipses are very unusual, not ordinary at all. For one, Jesus signed his name to the first three of them. In Revelation 1.8, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Now, Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. But it's very doubtful Jesus actually said this to John in that verse. John spoke Hebrew and Aramaic as his primary languages. Jesus likely said, I am the Aleph and the Tav to John, the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And translators changed this to Alpha and Omega when Revelation was translated in the Greek text. You know, the one that underlies our Bibles. And the path of the first three solar eclipses, the ones in 2017, 2023, and 2024 across the USA, form these two Hebrew letters. <laughs> Jesus' signature, in other words. If you look at the path of the first three eclipses, it forms an Aleph across America. Not an Aleph as we see it today, but in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew script used in the days of King David. The paths of the first and last of these eclipses form a Tav in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew script. The first and last solar eclipses are total eclipses, where all sunlight is blocked by the moon, whereas the 2023 eclipse in the middle was an annular or ring of fire eclipse, where a small ring of unblocked sunlight encircles the moon. So because of this difference in the type of eclipses, we believe we can separate these two groups to form two letters, especially because they're perfect renditions of those ancient Paleo-Hebrew letters. Jesus signed his name, Aleph and Tav, to these particular eclipses. But that's not all that is interesting about them. The first two of the eclipses have a unique connection to the Israeli-Palestinian peace plan. And this is primarily why I personally believe these eclipses are a warning sign from God to the USA to not get engaged in this peace covenant. 
In Joel 3, 2, Jesus judged the nations who divide his land. I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my heritage Israel because they have scattered them among the nations and have divided up my land. So the dividing of the land of Israel is a very serious offense to Jesus, worthy of judgment. And the USA has participated in the preliminary plans for this in a way that is uniquely associated with these eclipses. And I bet you didn't know that. The total solar eclipse on the 21st of August 2017 marked the very day that Secretary of State Kushner traveled to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, where he met Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman on the very next day after the eclipse to discuss President Trump's deal of the century, which proposed a two-state solution, and that was the very first time that this was brought out into public. So that was a pretty monumentous thing that happened the day after the eclipse. On the day of the annular eclipse on the 14th of October 2023, Secretary of State Blinken was supposed to meet with MBS, Mohammed bin Salman, but MBS stood him up until the day after, when they met exactly on the day following the eclipse again to discuss the Gaza war in Hamas and the dividing of Israel. This marks two eclipses, two meetings between MBS and the USA, two discussions of dividing the land of promise. Now, the day of the upcoming solar eclipse, the 8th of April, is the first of Nisan, 2024, and marks the onset of the Jewish religious year. You know, the one mandated in the book of Leviticus. It's not just any old day. And if the above pattern holds, then I expect that on the next day, the day after the eclipse, another Saudi-USA meeting is going to take place, perhaps to announce the beginning of ongoing negotiations on the two-state solution that Jesus is going to judge upon his return, and probably the adding of Saudi Arabia to the Abraham Accords. But it's that link to the dividing of Israel that is the basis, in my mind, for these eclipses being God's warning to the USA. And there is a fourth eclipse, an annular eclipse or ring of fire eclipse in the fall that absolutely no one has talked about or heard about yet. It might be the most important of them all, it is time to coincide with the Feast of Trumpets and the United Nations Summit on the Future that this channel has spoken of for the past nine months. The UN calls this Summit for the Future the most significant assembly in a generation. And it is at that summit that we expect the nations to covenant to surrender their national sovereignties to a world governance system. It is also the time we believe the UN will announce peace and security in the Middle East by incorporating the two-state solution that's going to divide Israel into two different states. We think all that's happening in that covenant, which we believe could well be the covenant with the many from Daniel 9.27 that launches the tribulation or 70th week of Daniel. Very strong reasons, therefore, for a warning from God if it's going to launch the last seven years of man's rule on earth. But there's even more to these eclipses than that. There are numerical coincidences. It is 354 days from the annular eclipse on the 14th of October 2023 to the annular eclipse on the 2nd of October 2024. On the eve of Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, exactly 12 Hebrew months worth of days, 12 lunar cycles, 12 new moons to new moons. And the April 8th, 2024 eclipse that's coming up next month is the exact midpoint between the two annular ones, 177 days before and 177 days after. Also, <laughs> It is 1,290 days from the annular eclipse on the 2nd of October, 2024, the eve of the Feast of Trumpets to the middle of Passover, the 14th of April, 2028, the likely midpoint then of the 70th week of Daniel, and 1,260 days from that point to Yom Kippur, 
the 26th of September, 2031, the end of the tribulation, if we're right about that. So if the USA and Saudi Arabia truly meet the day after the April 8th eclipse, it's game on in my mind. We will have a perfect match with what I think is a warning sign from God. His signature fits with history, unbelievable coincidences in terms of the Israeli-Palestinian peace plan, and the numbers of days between these eclipses is just amazingly consistent. Things like this just aren't an accident. But how is this an echo of Jonah and his testimony to the king of Nineveh? In a nutshell, Jonah lived in the northern kingdom of Israel after the division of Israel into Judah and Israel. God commanded Jonah to go to the wicked capital of Assyria, Israel's chief threat internationally, and prophesy against it. Jonah refused and jumped into a ship bound for Tarshish, or Spain, which in those days was like the ends of the earth. Get as far away from God as he could. As you may know from Sunday school lessons, God sent a great storm on the ship, and in order to save the sailors who were talking to him, Jonah had them throw him into the sea. There was a great fish that swallowed him whole, and he miraculously spent three days and three nights in the belly of that fish. This is the sign of Jonah that Jesus referred to in the Gospels that he would be in the belly of the earth three days and three nights, just as Jonah was in the belly of the fish. But the Jonah story doesn't end there. The fish spit Jonah out on dry land. And there, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, telling him to go to Nineveh. And being three days and three nights in the equivalent of hell, Jonah decided this time he would obey God. And he traveled to Nineveh to testify against it. Jonah 3, verses 4 and 5. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. Not only the people repented, but the king put on sackcloth as well and put forth a royal decree. And for this act of national repentance, God relented, sending destruction on the city. But as we stated previously, why would a city known for evil and violence repent on the word of some nobody prophet from their rival nation? It just doesn't make sense unless they were already worried by something else. We believe that may have been a total solar eclipse that involved much of the Middle East. Now, the Assyrian eclipse, also known as the Bur Sagale eclipse, is a solar eclipse recorded in Assyrian epibones, a list that gives the dates of all these different events in Assyrian history. And it ascribes this eclipse to the 10th year of the reign of King Ashurdan III. The eclipse is identified with the one that occurred on the 15th of June, 763 BC. And it was associated with a revolt in the city of Asher, an earthquake. The, the city was in the midst of a famine, Assyria was losing battles and losing territories to its enemies, and two separate outbreaks of plague had happened. So the city and the government of Assyria were in turmoil and primed to believe that this eclipse was a sign of their doom. This eclipse happened in the middle of the reign of Israel's King Jeroboam II, who ruled Israel from 786 to 746 BC. According to 2 Kings 14.25, the prophet Jonah lived and prophesied in Jeroboam's time. So we know then that this eclipse happened during Jonah's ministry. The biblical scholar Don Wiseman has speculated that the eclipse took place when Jonah arrived in Nineveh and urged the people to repent. This would explain then the dramatic repentance of the people as described in the book of Jonah. Ancient cultures, including Assyria, you know, viewed eclipses as omens of imminent destruction. So, now we know what happened then. Let's fast forward again to the future and the April 8th Aleph Tav eclipse that's a month away. How much similarity should we ascribe to Jonah? Is the destruction of the USA imminent if the USA persists in trying to divide the land of Israel? Now, if that fourth eclipse... Not the April 8th one, but the one that's happening in October, right before the Feast of Trumpets, marks the start of the tribulation. 
the rise of world governance systems of technocracy using digital ID, digital currency, social credit systems, and then the eventual rise of the Antichrist three and a half years later in the mark of the beast, <laughs> the answer is simple. The answer is yes. What happens between that eclipse on April 8th and the next one on the Feast of Trumpets? Well, the future of all mankind hangs in the balance if we're right. And that makes this a pretty important sign if it truly is one. So who's Jonah in this analogy? Well, I think it's you and it's me calling our cities to repentance and our nation. How will they react to our preaching? Will Biden actually repent and have Blinken step away from the negotiation table? Remember, the main thing is the main thing to the globalists as we talk on this channel all the time. And this covenant with the many, this pact for the future that they're proposing is the shining achievement of generations of effort by these Luciferian globalists. The USA politicians aren't anything but pawns in this game. Demonic forces are above them on the food chain. And in our own strength, we can do only very little to oppose this. Maybe one thing you could do right now is share this video like crazy. That's a very good start. But what we can do in the strength of God can accomplish very much. So prayer is what everyone should earnestly be doing from now on. We should also acknowledge that whatever God's will is, is what will happen. In Nineveh, he said, yet in 40 days, the city will be overthrown. The word yet left the door open to repentance. Is the door open for the USA and the world? I don't know. Knowing this may be tied to the tribulation in the fall, I'm sure many of you listening are hoping for an escape via a pre-tribulation rapture. But did you know that when Jesus mentioned escape in Luke 21, which is directly tied to the rapture, he told us there were four key ways every believer was to prepare for the escape whenever it was, pre-trib, pre-wrath, or post-trib. Click right here. Because not everyone in our churches is going to escape. Discover Jesus' own words on who it is who escapes. Till then, this is Nelson. And I'll see you there.